She knew the sixth consciousness, which is the manifest mind, or consciousness diversified. It is also called great perfect mirror wisdom. The monk, after cultivating three additional years, he was able to convert his eighth consciousness to the great perfect mirror wisdom. He converted the sense of his eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body into the success of wisdom performance. The successful of wisdom performance were the five senses interacting with the surrounding world. The monk finally figured out the way to attain. The successful of wisdom performance. In the previous retreat, the monk did not understand the teaching of his venerable master. Therefore, he used his consciousness because he liked to be praised, and he hated to be lamented. He thought if the people sees a monk that had a beautiful girl hugging him. The monk should not have any feelings. He was afraid people would not respect him if he looked at the beauty and still have appreciating feelings, even though he spent three years in solitude retreating. Therefore, he said he liked a dead tree covered under winter snow. By saying that, he was still under control. Of his consciousness, the calculated mind and the differentiated mind, so he could be praised. He still liked to have compliments and hated to hear criticism. He liked to see people know that he was a meticulous monk. After the second retreat, he successfully converted the consciousness. The calculated mind and the differentiated mind into the wisdom of wonderful contemplation. The wisdom of co- wonderful contemplation no longer possesses the differentiated mind. Like the sweet compliments and hate the bitter criticism. Therefore, he was able to tell the young girl, "You hug me, I hug you." And I know, you know, there is no need for the old lady. The Buddhist followers, venerable, and monks, to know. The feelings from the hug did not have anything to do with his enlightenment. It is clear that the monk used his wisdom of wonderful contemplation. In the old days, he used his eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and his mind to make sense. He now no longer attached to his self ego and his sixth consciousness, or the seven consciousness, or the equal mind. As he said, "I know that is the knowing." Of the wisdom of wonderful contemplation and the wisdom of equality. He was no longer using his consciousness as he used the wisdom of equality and the wisdom of wonderful contemplation. There were no differences between male and female. There were no differences between the monk and the girl except their karmas. 
When the wisdom of wonderful completion, the monk no longer interferes with his lust. Therefore, he attained the wisdom of equality. His Buddha nature, or his mirror, no longer needed to be wiped with these sentences. I am like a dead tree that is covered under winter snow. I have to preach in detail so you can understand thoroughly. You have to cultivate our minds as well, because the mind reflects if we recognize our nature or not. The fifth patriarch recognizes his. Nature, because he was able to control his delusional mind. That was the reason for the saying: cultivating the mind, nurture the nature. We don't have to cultivate our nature because originally there was nothing to exist. Our nature is already pure, so there is no need to cultivate. On the contrary, Varnmo Tantu thought his mind. And his nature were the same, so he had to cultivate for his nature. He said the body was a bodhi tree because he still dwells on the body. He further said the mind is the mirror standing. In a way, that was correct. However, if the mirror, with the wisdom of wonderful computation, Male and female are all equal. If you only greet the males but refuse to greet the female by hiding in the room, I have many colleagues who were also Buddhist monk that told all the female disciples to stay three feet away from them because of the Buddhist monk precepts. Sadly, these monks already gave up. The monkhood for the common life. Those monks who do not care if their female disciples were beautiful or not, whether their disciples stood next to them or not, because they did not allow their consciousness to interfere. That was called the wisdom of wonderful compl completion. I will repeat again, so you can fully. Understand. Healthy eyes combined with the manifested mind to create awareness. The very first sight was the pure seeing, but if we don't know how to convert the awareness into the wisdom of wonderful contemplation, the awareness will trigger the calculating mind, differentiating mind. And the recognized mind. If the person was a beautiful girl, then the awareness says this girl was cute and lovely to meet. The awareness combines with mana consciousness or the activity of the mind and decides to accept her as your disciple because this young beautiful girl. Who is rich and makes enormous offerings? You feel that you need to possess her. That is because you convert your self ego to the wisdom of equality. Therefore, you cannot control the eighth consciousness and convert it into the wisdom of wonderful computation. People who obtain enlightenment. Have three different bodies: the celestial body of Elder Andurnda was different from Varnable Anan Ananam. Likewise, my celestial body is different from Master Duimin or Master Duquan, due to the karma from previous lives. As we understand thoroughly the, of the transformation body, we can easily transform into different roles to help the sentient beings. 
anywhere that needs a Buddhist monk to preach Dharma, we then we can use the precepts of Buddhist monk to help the sentient beings. Anywhere that needs someone to help the greed, for example, those Nia salon owners are paying for a sacred scroll from their salon to collect money, like the waters of the Ganga River, and the money comes out like the dripping from the coffee machine. In the old days, I knew still meant these types of people, but that is not wisdom of wonderful contemplation. And still dwell on the Dharma and expect my disciples to apprehend Buddhism. Cultivate their minds and control their behaviors. They have to see their nature to become Buddha. That is a near impossible chance to happen. When they first entered the temple, I used superstition to encourage them because these sentient beings are sick, so I have to appear with sickness, just like how the Buddha promised to wed Miss Maranga to Venerable Anan once she attains the Arhat level. Venerable Anang liked beautiful, beautiful girls, so the Buddha told him the day he attained our head, the Buddha would let him marry the female divas. As you can see, the Buddha brought beauty to help people like beauty of the opposite sex. For people to like the wealth, the Buddha used the money to apprehend them. The Shakmani Buddha had the ability to transform into thousands of robots. Why were his disciples so rigid in not using the ability of transformation? Transformation like Sir Dwa Makat because of sentient beings, so he appeared to be sick. Therefore, I can't push away these nail salons or restaurant owners. Preaching Diamond Sutra to them is just like pushing them away from good. So depending on the disease to give out the medi medication. So I would ask my child, what was the best thing you were doing today for your luck? Master, every day I offer coffee to the God of wealth in the God of guardian. I would say that is great, but should you should recite the great compassionate mantra as well, because it would bring you a lot of blessing. After a while, I would tell them to recite Buddha's name as well, because reciting Buddha's name would bring, would bring them a lot of merit. In addition, reciting Buddha's name is very simple and won't take a lot of effort, because it is hard to recite the mantra in the nail salon. So let me ask you where the mind is and where is the nature? The nature is like the seawater and the delusional mind is like the waves. So you should not ask where the nature is. Our nature covers all the three great heavenly and everything was created by nature. So nature represents emptiness and the delusional mind is a symbol of the atmosphere and there is a certain limit. That is the atmosphere must have oxygen, hydrogen, carbonics and all the gases it creates in the atmosphere. There are worlds like the moon that do not have this type of atmosphere, but they still have the emptiness and the empty space. If you understand well in this world, 
and we no longer have to be afraid. Why did many Buddha patriarchs want us to create, recite Buddha's name? The truth is, the consciousness resides right at our thought. Consciousness resides right at the thought. The eyes are the sight perception that resides at the organ sight, which are the eyes. Where does the hearing perception reside? It resides at the organ hearing, which are the ears. Where do our senses reside? They reside in our mind, our thoughts. Let me give you an example. When we attend a wedding, we look at the bride and the groom by using the healthy eyes. However, if the bride and the grooms are not related to us, we go to the wedding because our friend invites us to go. Then we don't have the mind to criticize the bride and groom as ugly or beautiful. Nor how they dress, because we have equality, and we don't have the self ego, which is the consciousness. In addition, the differentiated mind will not intervene to praise or criticize. However, if the bride is your sister or your descendants, then you will favor him and her beauty will seem to increase. A few folds, because of the consciousness and the differentiated mind, we forever cannot obtain the wisdom of equality and the wisdom of wonderful contemplation. We cannot reach the realm of the Buddha. That is the wisdom of wonderful contemplation. Plotation, or originality, not a thing existed just like a mirror reflecting the images, but not retaining anything. During the concert of a wedding, we use our ears to listen. The first hearing is from the interacted eardrum, hearing the pure mind, and a split of a second. The awareness will accompany. If the song is compatible with your taste, then you will like it, and you want to come up to the stage to sing it. However, some people who can't stand Yu Lang or Duan Yuk's performance and only like Duan Vu, then. Feel these songs. Then hearing these songs will irritate you. They feel the bride's outfit annoys them and makes them feel uneasy. If things, if a few things matches the personal taste, then they will like it. Or these food masks their taste buds, then they want to consume more. These are the things that create karma. Why don't we have? Why do we have to cultivate? Because we want to have happiness. As we can see, there is a consciousness paired with a sense to create the karma. The first sight is the sight of the wisdom of wonderful contemplation. Which is also the mirror of our mind. However, if we add the consciousness, the calculating mind, and the differentiated mind, the true mind is replaced with the form of selfness, form of others, form of sentient beings, and the form of giving and receiving, along with the mind of love and hatred. A healthy eye is an eye that we can see without judgment. Seeing the bride and groom, and knowing they are the bride and groom, 
without adding praise and lament because of the awareness. However, in a fraction of a second, the differentiating mind will join in to notice. Notice the outfit of the bride and the groom. On the contrary, someone who did not notice, and then they don't really concern what the bride and the groom were wearing. Therefore, sins and blessings are created because of the differentiating mind. We know, we notice the bride wear clothes that fits our taste. The groom wears shoes that fits our taste. Or the groom is lovely. This wedding made us uncomfortable. Why do we feel uncomfortable? It is because of our seeing ability. Therefore, there was nothing that existed. So, why do we feel uncomfortable? Because the calculating mind, with the awareness mind, or the self ego. If the bridge is your little sister, or your niece, and the groom is your relative, therefore, they fit your personal taste. This is the reason we never attain the wisdom of each reality. The seeing without the wisdom of equality is the seeing of illusion. Once you understand that, then you will see that consciousness can either create sin or blessings. As you are listening to the preaching of the Diamond Sutra, that is the reason the Buddha told Elder Dubode. That he did not preach any dharma or obtained any enlightenment. The truth was that the Buddha preached dharma to help the sentient being recognize their nature. However, it is very difficult to to use awareness to recognize nature. But the awareness can help to memorize the preaching of the Buddha. Just as you are listening to my preaching, you have to use the awareness to memorize, and then you can differentiate, analyze, and calculate. As time goes by, when all the requirements are completed, you will automatically cross the gate to recognize your Buddha's nature. Now back to the question of a Buddhist follower. Who has been reciting the Diamond Sutra for over ten years? He has been practicing the Zen sect for a disciple of the holy monk Achan, a Thai Zen master. This fellow specializes in reciting the Diamond Sutra. He said it felt wonderful when he was reciting the Sutra. However, he still couldn't rid the delusional mind. And retain and retain the true mind. I will simply answer straight to the point because it will be easier to understand. In the old days, I had the same question and asked Venerable Master Wei Tun that when I listened to his preaching of the Diamond Sutra, it was wonderful, but it would be all gone once I left the main praying hall. Anyone who said something like that made me irritated, and I would fight back once I won. What should I do to solve my ego? The Venerable told me to answer that question myself. I kept trying to find the answer, but couldn't until one day the Venerable Master organized an event to visit Bianhua. Mental institution, which was located in the Binfuk County, the Varnbol would come to distribute goods and foods for the mental illness patients. Some of the major alms givers wanted to know the number of patients so they can prepare. The Varnbol 
contacted the institution and knew that there were about 500 inmates, 300 females and 200 male patients. I came to help the vulnerable. While I was distributing the gifts, one of the male patients jumped over and slapped my face and took away the gift. At that moment, I looked at him and smiled without saying anything nor feeling angry. In the afternoon, after the event was over, during the Dharma talk, Varnamal preached Dharma and asked me why I was not angry when the mental patient slapped my face, took away the gift without waiting for his turn. I told him that was because the patient was mental, so I shouldn't be angry. The Varmo then asked why I would get mad or angry when my monkhood brothers eat the sour soup or the delicious curry without waiting for me. I always complained to the Varmo to correct my monkhood brothers. I said because these brothers are not mental. The Varnable told me to remember anyone who hasn't recognized Buddha's nature, that they all live with their delusional mind. The mental patient in the Bin Hua Institute slapped me in my face to steal the food, and I was not mad because I thought that they were mental. From that day on, any monkhood brothers who did not treat me rightfully, I should ask this question myself ask if they are insane or mental if they were sane then they would recognize their Buddhist nature and use their sixth consciousness the wisdom of complementation the sixth consciousness the wisdom of equality if they use these wisdom they wouldn't fight for the food with me Therefore, if we want to rid the delusional mind and retain the true mind to avoid all the conflict between husband and wife, brothers and sisters, and co-workers, we simply think these people are mental because they have not rid their delusional mind and retained their true mind. That is the message I want to send to the Buddhist follower. There is no need to think of true mind and delusional mind. If your wife was angry due to complication at work because she hasn't obtained enlightenment and she hasn't been able to correct the sixth consciousness to the wisdom of compl complication. She still did not know about the wisdom of equality between husband and wife. She is just another mental patient. This follower should use the concept of not getting angry at the mental patient, even if he curses or hits him. By using this con concept, you will be able to rid your delusional mind and obtain your true mind. When you argue with a mental patient, you are also having mental problems as well. If I hit back at that male patient when he took the gift and slapped my face, I will also be insane. It is very simple. Dharma is like that. Simple and direct. As you know, the seeing and hearing abilities are always available in the sixth sense and the six sensory objects. In the Zen Select, in the Zen sect, where the six senses in contact with the six sensory object without retaining, that is enlightenment, that is the eyes seeing the beautiful girl, the ears hearing her voice, and the nose smelling her perfume, the tongue tasting her delicious cooking, and the hand feels her soft skin. These are the sensory that is in contact 
with the opposite sex, as long as we don't allow the awareness to differentiate and calculate. Love and hatred, like and dislike, we then have successfully converted the five senses in the wisdom of perfecting. Because of the eyes, ears, nose, tongues, and body, we can contact with the sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. But the most important one is the consciousness. Where is the consciousness located? The consciousness of sight is located at the eyes. The consciousness of sound is located at the ears, and so on and so forth. The consciousness itself is located between love and hatred thoughts. As we att attend the wedding, the eyes saw the bride and the groom. Which is the consciousness of sight. The ears hears the bride laugh, and the groom song, which is the consciousness of sound. The bride asks if the food was good or not. That was consciousness of sound. The nose smell, the conscious, the nose smell, the delicious food, which is. The consciousness of smell. As we arrive home and people ask if the bride was beautiful or not, the consciousness start to work to recall. The consciousness draw the information from the eight consciousness. The eight consciousness stored all the information to make us feel suffering. For example, you tried to shake the bride's hand, but she declined because she said she did not know who you are. As soon as you got home, you start to badmouth the bride. The consciousness drew the information from the eighth consciousness. That was the reason the Buddha called Dharma objects. The eyes contact the beauty. The ears contact the sound. The nose contacts the good and bad smells. The tongue contacts the taste buds. The body contacts the softness, hot or cold, male and female. Meanwhile, the conscious made us relieve these senses again and again, day after day. For example, some wives who suffer from their husbands from the fight, even the fight. Were long over, but when their mothers calls from Vietnam, Canada, or different states, they use their consciousness to suffer their own mother. At that moment, their husband has already stopped punishing them, but they would use their consciousness to tell their own mother, to make their mother suffer for them by telling their mother that their husband has hit them on the face and bruised their eyes. Or how the husband curses at their parents and relatives. The Buddha said, "A man with the wisdom is a man who got hit by a poisonous arrow. He would remove the arrow, uses medication to treat the wound, without paying attention to the archer. This man obtained the wisdom of contemplation and wisdom of equality." He converted his mirror into wisdom of wonderful. On the other hand, a man who had not rid his delusional mind before he removed the arrow, he would ask who the archer was instead of treating his wound. He then transformed the poisonous arrow through the telephone line and shoot it at his mother, father, and relatives. That was crazy because he hadn't rid the delusional mind and trained the true mind. Ladies and gentlemen, the eyes record different images, and the seeing ability helped us to use objects, males, females, different colors, and many more. We didn't create any karma. The consciousness with the differentiated and calculated mind synchronizes together to create karma. There was a Buddhist monk named Tree Tung. 
asked the sixth patriarch, Yunang, why do people cultivate to have three bodies and four wisdom? The sixth patriarch responded that his body and Venerable Tandu's body are different. In the previous life, the sixth patriarch did not practice giving alms and only focuses, focuses on practicing his dharma. Therefore, in this life, he was born in a poor family and his physical appearance was not as good as Varmbo Tandu. Everybody has a different celestial body based on the karma created in their previous lives. The sixth patriarch transformed body was utilized when the disciple of Venerable Tandu chased him to the jungle. He lived in the woods for 16 years with hunters without declaring that he was vegetarian. He ate the leafy vegetables in the soup without eating the meat. The truth was that the Buddha's nature was not vegetarian or meat eater. By living with the hunters, the six patriarch helped tra trap animals to escape while the hunters were sleeping. That was how he transformed his body to help sentient beings. When the six patriarch left the woods to preach Dharma, he only held five precepts of a layman. He had to ask his disciple, who was a vulnerable? that preached Nirvana Sutra to shave his head and become a monk because he couldn't accept a vulnerable monk as his own disciple when he had only held only five precepts. To answer the question of clear the mind, recognize the nature, have bright wisdom, obtain transcendental powers, save your Dharma master. As you can see, the master of the sixth patriarch was a senior vulnerable monk who preached Nirvana Sutra but did not recognize his, his nature. Sixth patriarch was enlightened to help his master. His master knew the sixth patriarch was the true master, but still the vulnerable had to shave sixth patriarch's head and give 250 Buddhist monk precepts so laymen and laywomen would talk, wouldn't talk wrongly. For example, I am not enlightened, but Buddhist monk Hong Duk and Master Tan, Master Tui Min became enlightened. They will help me to become enlightened as well. There is nothing wrong about this. A layman who had already cleared the mind and recognizes his nature wants to help senior monk, then this layman must shave his hair, transform into a Buddhist monk. Don't you think so? Once you understand Dharma, it doesn't really matter if the celestial body is beautiful or ugly. The transformed body is much more important. Anywhere who needs a Bodhe, we appear as a Bodhe. Where they need an ethical husband, we appear as an ethical husband. Where they need an ethical wife, we appear as an ethical wife. Where the disciple are still superstitious, then I perform fortune telling. Fortune telling. But in the end, I will use Diamond Sutra to break off their superstition. Newcomers want me to tell their fortune. I will tell their fortunes to help them as they practice Dharma with me for a long period of time. I will stop telling them their fortune because fortune telling is garbage. In the Lotus Sutra, the Buddha called as feces, not the real treasures of the Dharma. There were people who asked me why Diamond Sutra has unspeakable merit. Hearing a sentence and reciting, then the merit will be even more. Let me tell you this. Touring India, India, giving alms to the blind and the poor. Casting Buddha statues are quite simple. As you know, Diamond Sutra is the real diamond. 
people can give you a thousand fake diamonds, but they are not valuable as one real diamond. All the things created by the delusional mind and the body of four elements can only last one hundred years. The love and hatred created by the delusional mind is not long-lasting. There is no enemy or friend that can last forever. However, showing you the path to either birth or death, no aging or death, that is the Buddha's nature. The Buddha, the Buddha implied that the Diamond Sutra is priceless because the practitioner receives the real gem. Having a million fake diamond is not as valuable as having a real diamond. The question today was about the difference between the mind and nature. The mind and the nature is like the ocean and the waves. We nurture the nature because we already have Buddha's nature. Therefore, we need to nurture the nature. We don't have the nurture, the mind, because it was already there, but because we have forgotten about it. Like we have our parents, we keep thinking that they were orphanage. We now bring our parents back home to support them, so we can experience the Dharma, nurturing. The Buddha's nature by restraining the delusional mind. The simplest thing we can do from now on is, when you have family problems, you should understand that your family members haven't recognized their Buddha's nature. They still live with the differentiated mind. And the calculated mind. They still dwell on the self ego, just like a mental patient. A mental patient doesn't make you sad and dwell on it. You will be free and happy. That is a lesson I have learned a few decades ago. I have not answered the question from the Buddhist follower named Tham Den, who lived in Toronto, Canada. She wanted to know if she kills ant, roaches, and mosquitoes while reciting Buddha's name for them to be reborn in the happy land of the Amitabha Buddha. Will she still have sin? I preach Dharma very clearly. The compassionate thought to free the trapped animal incur, occurs in your mind and already brings you blessing. The action can only occur after the thought has already formed. Like I said before, blessing and sins are created by the consciousness. The very first sight you see is a flock of ants entering your house. Or a group of cockroaches underneath the fridge. The first sight was seeing the pure mind. However, however, once the consciousness accompanies you, you will think the ants will enter the food, and the cockroaches will contaminate the supplies that will affect the health of your family members. The self ego and the calculated mind work together and make you think. Of your husband and your children. That is also the four forms: the form of selfishness, the form of husband, and the children is the form of sentient beings. However, the consciousness still did not commit sins yet. It needs to think and calculate. Being a Buddhist follower, you know killing is violating the no. Killing precepts. So you think reciting a rebirth Dharmarian mantra, a great compassionate mantra, or a session 
of reciting Buddha's name to erase the sin is not correct. However, doing this only creates karma for you to repay. When you first see the roaches, it doesn't create any karma because it was the seeing with the pure mind. As soon as the awareness adds the calculated, calculated mind in your seeing, it calculates the risk and bene- benefits of having the ant, roaches, and mouses, mouses inside your house. You know killing them will make you sin, so you want to recite the sutras and give them the merit. The calculating mind creates the first karma from killing. The body also creates the karma by spraying poison at them. You will have to pay for your karma. A life is for a life. Once you finish paying off your killing karma, they will reincarnate as your disciple to give you difficulties to avenge its anger. Just like my disciple gave me so much difficult at the end of their lives, I still have to stand at their deathbeds to guide them to be reborn in the happy land. Therefore, all the sins and blessings are created by the consci- consciousness, not by the eye. I use her question to incorporate Diamond Sutra so you can see clearly the first sight of the ant, the cockroaches, and the mouse by the pure mind. However, the calculated mind of the consciousness accompany and makes you worry about your husband. And children's health. So you decide to kill them. After killing them, you worry about the killing sins, and decide to recite the mantra. Whatever you do first, you will pay first. Whatever you do next, you will pay later. The bottom line is, no killing at all, because it is the first precepts of the Buddha. This Dharma talk about the Diamond Sutra will be, temp- will be temporarily stopped here. Sincerely yours. Next week I will continue to preach the main part of today's session, which I couldn't do today. The Buddha asked Venerable Dubare if the Buddha cultivated and attained enlightenment and preached Dharma or not. Elder Dubode replied that the Buddha did not cultivate, nor obtain enlightenment, nor preach Dharma. That is the main idea of today's Dharma talk. However, I had to postpone it until next week. I vowed to send all the merits from from preaching Dharma to all disciples and sentient beings to become enlightenment. Namo Gomduk. Wow.